We've spent a lot of time over the years driving a lot of different cars, from some of the slowest money can buy through to some of the fastest. And it seems that everywhere we go in the world, we find people that want to make their cars go faster. But the thing is, getting a fast car and making it faster is not that hard. You can upgrade your turbo, add an exhaust, or even in its simplest form, just flash tune the original software for impressive results. Of course, you could simply remove as much weight as possible, but eventually, if you're anything like us, you'll just want more power, and you'll want it without removing all of the things that make your car feel like a car, like your interior and your panels. So in this episode, we're going to get a budget car and make it go faster for as cheap as possible, as quickly as possible, and as simply as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Yaris Hilton, and this whole journey began with a simple check engine light. Now the whole time we've owned Yaris Hilton, there's been a check engine light on, and isn't that just the worst? Today, we're gonna fix it. So I asked Marty to go buy us a scan tool. So I went out, I went and got us the ultimate scan tool. This is an engine out of a Toyota Corolla, big block. It's and today, big block. we're gonna fix Yaris Hilton and get rid of that check engine light by putting this in that. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, my friends. The day has finally come. We're making the Yaris fast by almost doubling the power with Marty's scan tool. This, this is the scan tool. Uh, so a Toyota Yaris such as our little 1.3 litre one comes with a very revvy, very exciting VVTi engine that makes a grand total of 63 Kilowatts. That's not even at the wheels, is it? No, that's, that's at the like engine. at the engine. That's factory so rated like when it was 40 here or something before we drove it. Yes. Uh, so obviously that's not enough. Um, turbos and things for them. Yeah, but why? Why? When you can big block it, and we know how good big blocking can be. This is a ZRE 152 Corolla. It came out between 2008 and 2013. Really common, really cheap, and that engine is a 2ZRFE, and that makes about a hundred kilowatts, maybe 110 kilowatts, almost double that. That makes more power than that turbocharged. Exactly. Now the rumor is that this engine fits that. We don't know. We've never done it. You're coming with us to find out. All we do know is that a Yaris in Europe that looks a lot like that, which is an XP90, came out with this engine. I'm so Toyota's prepared to do it. Are, I'm laughing because there's also a rumor that that doesn't fit. Well, there's that. <laughs> But I mean, we don't actually know. We've never done it before, no. but we're going to bring you with us on this magical journey. We're going straight down the Unicorn Sphincter, aren't we? Absolutely. Full of rainbows straight and Toyota. In. What's their version of VTEC called? VVTI. It's got dual VVTI. It's on the exhaust and intake cam. So it actually should, it should be a good thing, man. This makes over 100 kilowatts. Wow. 63, 100. And look at the plastic efficiency look at it. here, Martin. It just looks so boring. But it's going to be amazing in that. And it ultimately, will. I think the goal is to actually turn this into a bit of a street slash track yep. weapon yep. Uh, that will dominate most of our other cars. Now, and importantly, assuming that this does bolt in, this is a cheap swap. You can pay a couple of hundred bucks for these engines at a wrecker. You could get a half cut like we did. We got the half cut to make sure we'd have any extras and spares and mounts and stuff because we don't know if it's going to work. 500 bucks to but get the stuff you need, Exactly. Right? By the end of this, you might, may, if we're lucky, have a recipe that tells you exactly what you need to big block your Yaris. Or you'll know exactly what doesn't work. So step one, we're going to fix the check engine light by removing the engine from the Yaris. We don't have no Haynes manual. We don't have no YouTube knowledge. Here's the tools you're going to need. Everything. Yep. All right, let's get to it. It's Yaris Hilton. The Toyota Yaris, a testament to all things average, mundane, and built for nothing more than pure, practical, unadulterated boredom. Australia got a 1.3 litre engine and a 1.5 litre option, and we accidentally bought the 1.3. Yet neither of these engine options has enough spirit to stir your soul out of the deep zombie-like state that the Yaris will push you into. Yeah! But we're about to fix that with this, a 1.8 litre engine from a Toyota Corolla. And you can pick these up for around 500 bucks. If this works, we'll have almost double the power in our nugget sleeper Yaris Hilton. So let's get to it. Our first job is to remove the front end of the Yaris and throw the 1.3 litre engine in the bin. 
We paid $3,100 for this Yaris, which is a high price, but luckily ours has never been crashed. Yaris Hilton has a dirty past, man. Look at it though. It's been pumped. Whoa. Whoa. We should take that off anyway. I mean, we're going to take, the plan is to take most of this off and sort of pull the engine down and out, yes. which is how the reverse of how Toyota does it. Look at it. No mention of that when we purchased Yaris Hilton. No, it wasn't it a one owner car. Yeah. Which means she would have known. Oh, she got pumped. Far out. That's a big hit. I'm, you know what? I mean, it's not quite airbag. It was probably a slow hit. But if you hit that at speed, that's airbag territory, man. Far like out. Like straight in the front. But that would be a different front bar then. Yeah. Yaris is, Yaris Can you Hilton's... believe that someone may have sold us a car without telling us all the fine details about its history? Some damage in there, man. Okay, so maybe our Yaris has a chequered past, but that's not going to stand in our way as we give this little car the love it doesn't deserve. So this here is off, and look at that. I mean, you'd have no idea of knowing your car's had such a big hit until you actually pull the bumper off. And you can see just how much damage is down here as well. Looks Quite like amazingly, it. it's still working. I must ask you a question. If I was me, but I was actually you, what I would do is I would go to the wrecker and get another one of these. But this here is actually just going to get in the way of a front Don't, end don't say it. Of our naturally uh, aspirated engine. Uh, Beep, it's all been beeped. It's going to get in the way of a naturally Beep. aspirated engine. Beep. So we don't need to replace this. We might. Let's just see. Let's, it's early let's days. not make any decisions yet. It's just, we've got Martin, to get what's stuff. next? Air Where box, are we going? Airbox out. Thingy out. Wiring out of the way. Aircon degassed. Radio. We should put, actually, we need to drain the radiator because otherwise we're going to get covered in schmutz. Okay, cool. So let's do that. And our dribble should turn into a torrent. Ah, oh, it's a torrent. Well, oh, there it goes. Some people get confused as to why people would waste their time working on a small, cheap car like a Yaris. But the truth is that everything has a greater potential. And yes, that's our faces on a special edition can of WD-40. The thing with small, cheap cars is that they're super accessible and you can learn heaps of stuff that you can apply to a better car later down the road once you're armed with excellent knowledge and rad skills. There's so many people out there that are too scared to work on their own car themselves. And that's why cars like this can be an excellent platform for education, learning new stuff, and just hanging out with your mates. Well, there goes a big weird thing that we don't know what it does. Now it looks like a normal engine bay. Yes. Is that just a drip tray to catch rain off the windscreen? That's a hectically designed drip tray if that's all it's meant to do. Why, why is it so heavy? Why is the engine so far back into the car? That's for weight, performance and distribution, Martin. It was basically, they wanted to make it like, a, like an MR2, except then the seats got in the way. In reverse. Yes. Martin, do you like Toyotas? Mm -hmm. Daihatsu is a Toyotas technically, so I guess I have to say yes. Okay. I don't know, man. Like, isn't this the blandest of bland? But I say that when it makes 64 kilowatts, probably 54 by the time we've got to it. We're going from white bread to brown bread. Yeah. Aren't we? Doesn't brown bread have less crap in it? We're putting more crap in it. It's got grains. It's got like nuts and seeds and extra things. It's got better roughage, Martin. Okay. Being a bread-based Toyota, you can strip this entire engine with about four tools. Our radiator looks like it got pumped hard when Yaris Hilton got front-ended, so we may have to replace it, as well as customise some radiator hoses to fit our new engine. Next, our fuel system and clutch slave cylinder can be removed off the front of the engine. You know what else you notice about a car this new? Not once, have either of have you used a spanner yet? Uh, not really, no. See, everything is designed to be accessed with tools like this. Yeah, right. Because in the factory, that's what they do. The hardest part of this build so far has been getting the heater hoses off. I've been tugging it for about 10 minutes and really? I just can't get it out. I've got my little needle nose pliers, but I feel like you really need something like huge to go on today. Yeah, like, yeah. 
it is pretty large. If I'm, I'm around the base of it. But if you twist, just twist me. Yeah, but you pull at the same time. It's the twist technique. Pull, pull. I'm pulling, I'm pulling, I'm pulling. Oh, I'm it's pulling. coming. Oh, it's, yes, there's oh, one. Oh, dude, it's spurred at me. There's one. All it's, right, now we need to get that bottom one. We've crushed it a bit, though. That's the right. only problem. Hole number one done. We have to Hole try number two. Let me adjust these. Crush it. I might be able to get it from underneath, you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. hold, you hold them, you hold the little ones. Cool. Spray a bit of lube on there. Cool. I spray that at the same here. time. Yep. yep. You mm -hmm. grab it, now yep. twist. Go. I'm spraying it yep. all over it. Just try not to... If I get my hand in there as well, I'll put my hand on yours. Yeah, go. And now twist and pull. Yep. I'll spray some down there into yep. the gap. Yep. Go, go. Spray it. Ah, oh, it's all running down the side. Oh, here it goes, man. Yes. Yes. Well done. Why were they so hard? Did we know. crush that? Yeah, we did. Oh, is that bad? Yeah. You just crush it back the other it's way. It's only bad if we still need a heater, right? Well, this is true. No, it'd be fine. Toyota, cool. man. Reliable. All right, we're getting closer. So we're still waiting on air conditioning, man. Yep, air conditioning, man. And this what about is... all this wiring? Is there just yeah. like some master loom big patonk that we can just undo? Uh, yes, there sort of is. Um, we can undo, well, there's a few different ways to do it. You can unplug everything off the engine. Yep. Which is fine because we've got to, got to do that anyway. Yep. That might be easier and then just like move the loom over out of the way. Or you can disconnect it over here, but you've got to pull the fuse boxes and everything out too. But and we need that ECU starter. anyway though, right? Because this ECU is going to have like... That We're going to attempt to use that. that ECU. It's not guaranteed that it'll work because yeah. it might have a whole bunch of security stuff where like the key communicates with a box and the boot and we don't have the boot. Yeah, okay. Um, so I don't know whether that's going to work or not. Um, but we're going to find out. We're going to find out, Martin. Mm. It's all about the joy of discovery. One step at a time. Get it in here, make yep. it actually physically fit, and then worry about that stuff. Is this the fuel? Oh, yeah, I believe so. So is that one going to stay, or are we going to chicken crimpy it? We, it's got some kind of weird disconnect thing I've never seen before, so we're going to work out how that works yep. and then disconnect it. Okay, cool. What a weird thing. With the fuel line disconnected, we're using a professional fuel stopper pen to stop it leaking. Next up, I'm going to undo the exhaust and unplug the ECU, and then we can disconnect the drive shafts. How are you going, Martin? Just I'm leave good. it there for one sec. Are you leveraging it? Whoa, that's tight, man. <laughs> wow. Very tight. So I have popped the drive shaft on the other side. About to pop the drive shaft out on this side, but to actually get it out of the way, I've got to pop the lower ball joint. As you can see, I made a nice mess here. And then I think we're good. You've done all the wiring? Yes. Not happening for you. If you've done all the wiring, then the only thing standing in our way is aircon. So, aircon gas gentlemen should be here shortly to take that out, and then we are good yes. just to pull it all out. We're going to put the engine on a crane and just drag it out the front. On a crane or on a jack? Because I'm actually removing, removing Martin. I'm removing this lower piece now, which means potentially we could just pull it forward and drop it. Or we could do it on an engine crane. Mm. We should do scissors, paper, rock. All right, let's do it your way. <laughs> I'm removing the final pieces on the front of the car while Marty gets to work sorting out the drive shafts in a gentle, measured fashion. Get off! Last thing that's stopping our engine coming out is the aircon. <laughs> is not this bit that I just took off, even though that's what I was about to tell you, but the aircon. Other than that, um, so both drive shafts are out now? Uh, they're about to be when you help me. Okay. But they, they're popped off, they just need to actually now be removed out of the way. So all the electrical stuff, I'm pretty sure there's nothing else attached up there. We'll find out when we try and yank it out. Um, but I've got some scissors, so we'll be right. <laughs> um, this is off. Yeah, um, we're looking good, man. It's looking really good, Martin. Yep. Just like it was done at the factory, but in reverse. Except done by us. Yeah. How do professionals do this, by the way? Quietly and with nice power tools on a production line, and they get it done this whole car probably in like an hour. Okay. And we've taken multiple hours to okay, get... Okay, good. <laughs> some good bits off. I'm still proud of our achievements. Oh, me too. Pulling an engine out's probably easier than putting one in, though, I reckon. It's much easier to throw around engine conversion ideas than to actually complete the task. Even in a basic car like this, you're venturing into the unknown. Picking an engine from the same manufacturer is a good start. Picking an engine that's been used on the same platform is an even safer bet, but swapping a better engine from the same model car is the absolute easiest method to do this. Try and do your research before you pull everything apart, and if you do get it back together, it's ridiculously good bang for buck. You can potentially save money by not wringing the neck of your existing engine and instead just going bigger or just going better. The engine capacity increase alone is enough to make Yaris Hilton a true track weapon. Cool, so we have strap on the gearbox 
and around the exhaust manifold, which is a nice strong spot for it. That engine mount's undone. Underneath one's undone. Yep, crane's got the weight. I took the exhaust off, I've taken the electrics off, you've taken that off, Fuel. heaters off. We're about to find out if anything's still connected, but this <laughs> is it, man, let's... Okay. So I'll pull the whole mount off. You, you only really need to do the bolt that goes through, but I like to sort of undo everything, being that the crane's got yeah. the weight of it. It just means it's likely to get caught up. That last one, last bolt. This is the last bolt. So oh, now... Martin, the excitement is so real. Now it's just a matter of if something's still snagging it in there. Martin, we have lift off, mate. Do we? The excitement is real because we know that this little boredom factory is about to be rejuvenated with Toyota Corolla power and spirit. The last thing we need to do to exercise the demons of this filthy 1.3 litre engine is take the weight of the engine on the crane and then undo and remove the final engine and gearbox mounts. Yeah. She's out. Yeah, dude. Yeah. The engine that was never meant to be in there is now gone. Look at this real estate. Wow. Look at it. The potential, man. That's what you can see right there is potential. I've never looked at a Yaris before and seen potential, but I have today. I have today. Mr. So now everything we just did, we do that again. Yeah. Except with the addition of a reciprocal, is that right? Well, this time we can use a reciprocating saw to chop away anything we don't want. And then we have to sort of measure stuff and work out if we can use this box or we have to use that box and which shaft we're going to use. The ideal situation is that that engine bolts up to this box and it just goes straight back in with a different engine mount. That's what the comment section is going to say. Oh, I did that and that worked. And that's yep. great, except we don't know that yet. And that is as long as that engine fits that. Yeah, or we have to put that whole drive train in and then work out what shafts and mix and match. Either way, it's a mix and match. What we're hoping is Toyota got lazy and went, let's just make one gearbox. Yeah. But we don't know. But what we have done is fixed our check engine light. Well, it's fixed already, right? Because now, no if engine. you turn the key, there is no check engine light. <laughs> so that's done. <laughs> With the 2NZ FE engine gone and headed straight to the bin, it's time to turn our attention to the Super JDM Legit 2ZR FE Corolla engine. So we got this cheap from a wrecker because turboing stuff gets expensive, but luckily we're not doing that. Uh, so we've got a cheap wrecker engine. We actually got the whole half cut, which is cool. We basically said, we need an engine and a gearbox. And the wrecker said, just take the whole lot because the panels is actually what's most valuable to people because most people are crashing their cars, just like the Yaris we found out had also been crashed. That's right. Now it took us probably about four hours to pull the engine out of the Yaris. You might be able to do it quicker. Let us know. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, but here, we imagine that this is actually going to be much faster because we're going to remove this with some reciprocating saws and other things because we actually don't need None any of, of this stuff. The first thing that we have to, have to, have to, have to do is we've got to get the aircon gas taken out because otherwise Captain Planet, he's going to take a dump on you, man. He's not happy. So first thing is um, aircon guy is going to come and get rid of that. And then we're just going to pull this out, cut, hack, Throw Slash, it and, and throw all this stuff, out. scrap and recycle all the metal um, and just everything else we can't use goes in the bin. And so I know what you're wondering, does this even fit? We have no f***ing <laughs> idea, but we're going to try <laughs> and you can come with us. And if it doesn't fit, we'll throw it all in the bin and go buy a WRX. But if it does fit, we'll oh have a God. mad little fast car. So let's get to it. Can we buy a WRX anyway? Our next job is to degas the air conditioning on both the Yaris and the Corolla, and then we can get to work on removing the almighty 2ZR from the half cut. Just be careful with that bit, man. We might need it for something. Or you could do that. That's an air conditioning system. A quick little word of warning, even if all the gas has been removed, there can still be some pressure. If you have a look down here, it looks like Jabba the Hutt has sharted <laughs> down the front of our Yaris here. Um, so just be careful when you pull some of this stuff out because it could be the kind of money shot that you don't want. <laughs> sharted, oh dude. So I've got the ECU out of the Corolla and I'm just interested to see if Toyota are that creative 
with their ECUs. Oh, oh yeah. stop it, Martin. Well, that doesn't really mean a great deal because that, what that means is that an ECU that's not for this engine may run this engine. But the good news about that is it's very likely that it's the same platform. That's what we're going for. Martin, we've got uh, an ECU that probably doesn't work that fits a loom. <laughs> so whoop de do. <laughs> but, no, no, but. We want that side mount, to fit. It's this side we want to fit. The engine mount looks very similar. The engine mount looks similar, that's the good news. They mount it differently slightly in this car, they oh, mount it at the front. What, what about that? But we we're gonna, that one. What I'm hoping is that we don't have to use this gearbox. And what you'll probably find is this gearbox is actually the same, or has the same internals with a different final drive, but they're not that creative. They just go, it's a manual gearbox and it's available for these five years, but it just looks a bit different. I hope you're right, Martin. So I hope I'm right too, but what I really hope, and once we get this out, we're gonna have a look at the bell housing, and if the bell housing looks like our, this motor will go onto a Yaris bell housing, we are home and hosled, because very worst case, we'll only have to do one engine mount. Everything else will just go in like it always did. Martin, if that happens... I know, it's probably not going to happen. No, no, if it happens as you've described... Yes. What do I get? A WRX. Yeah? Yes. You'll That's get, about as good a deal as you're going to get. You'll get me a WRX. Yeah, or you'll get your own one, but using <laughs> half my money. <laughs> what do you think? Sure. Or half buy you a car. Yeah? Yeah. Do you know that WRXs can be quite expensive, don't you? Well, that's how confident I am this shit won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Just one engine mount. It's very cute, Martin. So if this engine easily fits in the Yaris, then we've got a mad overpowered front wheel drive nugget. Then Marty gets himself a WRX, which is what I call a win-win situation. But for now, we've got to get back to the half cut and get this epic engine out so we can see if it fits. With the front end of the half cut mostly removed, now we can disconnect the drive shafts. The driver's side popped straight out, but the passenger side is proving to be much more challenging. There, done, boom. Good one, man. Did you feel it go then? Yeah, I did. Awesome. I hanging right. my whole body off it. Uh, can you pull that out and I will... With both of the Corolla drive shafts disconnected, we can edit in a shot that has nothing to do with anything but it looks cool, and then we can get the engine crane attached and get ready to remove the goodness. Alright, so it's been another couple of hours, and I do believe we have the engine out of the Corolla, Martin. Sure do. Doubling the power for just a few hundred dollars. It's completely possible assuming that it fits and we have no idea if it is going to fit or not yet but yeah dude yes that's awesome well done martin another high five another high five I am, another high ten i'm completely covered in schmutz from toyota's which is the worst kind of schmutz martin well um, done give me 11. that's really weird this bit is now where we work out if the conversion is even possible and whether that engine will bolt to this gearbox. <laughs> huh. So we've arrived at a climactic make or break part of this build, where we see whether this whole car is going in the bin or if we're gonna be doing some hectic front wheel drive skids. Now what we need to work out is if the Yaris gearbox will fit onto the Corolla engine. Even though the Corolla's a six speed and the Yaris is a five speed, if the housings are the same, it means we can reuse the Yaris gearbox, which we know will fit the mounts inside the Yaris engine bay. Okay, so down here we have got the Corolla engine that is almost ready to go in. Now over here is the Yaris engine that is ready for the bin, but we are going to be using the Yaris gearbox on the Corolla engine. And Marty has some good news. It looks like it might fit. It looks like it might fit because they look almost identical. They didn't at first because this one from the Corolla looks bigger. When you start to look at some of the, the bits and pieces, they all look the same. Like this bracket's the same, that thing's the same, the shifter arrangement is almost the same, the clutch is in the same spot, the mounts, yeah, they're a bit different, but that makes sense because they're different cars. Yeah. But actually, physically, I think we're dealing with the same gearbox. Yeah. Because Toyota would have gone, why reinvent the wheel? 
It, why reinvent the fridge, Martin? Exactly. When, when the, the fridge, fridge is already there. Perfect. So this is a six-speed one. That is the difference. Yes, if you want to go crazy, put a six-speed in. Great. You've got six gears. Uh, for simplicity's sake, and we know this is going to fit the car better, we're going to put the Yaris gearbox back in, being that they do look the same. Yeah. And all we're doing is just swapping the clutch, and we have a clutch um, yeah. that we just uh, ordered, which is over here. So to make that work, you can see the difference here. So on the left, we have the clutch out of the Yaris, which is a replacement one. It's been replaced at some point, probably fairly recently, and you can see the clutch disc there. And then here we have the Corolla one, which actually looks factory, and it's a bit more worn out, and it's got a lot of like scoring and heat marks on there. And you can see the difference in size even. The Yaris clutch is smaller, see? Probably about... 10 mil smaller the whole way around. So we are going to use a Corolla clutch in the Yaris gearbox with a Corolla engine and it should just all fit together and work. Well, that is the plan. There it is. Cool. So all we're going to do basically is install that onto our, um, onto our engine and yep. then put our Yaris gearbox onto the Corolla engine and then try and get it into the car, and that's where we start to work out engine mounts and stuff. Now, this should be able to handle that power fine. Factory power. Yes, but will it be able to, not that we're going to, will it be able to handle turbo power, Martin? Well, it won't need to, because we're not going to turbo it. Exactly, we're not going to. So why is it an issue then? I'm just wondering out of interest. Why are you looking at the camera and talking about turbos? I'm not. How do, you can't even see what I'm doing. It doesn't need a there. turbo, do you? I know it doesn't. That's why we're not doing it. We're keeping it like that. But I'm just wondering, would this be able to take the power of the turbo? For a little while? A turbo. I have a really good track record turbo. with turboed cars and factory clutches. Do you? No. Okay, good. Terrible. Martin, let's stick it in. Shall we install this? Then let's stick it in and then let's work out why it won't fit. Time to see if the internet tells the truth when it says that this is possible, or if the internet tells the truth where it says this is impossible. We pick up the Yaris gearbox and it slips perfectly onto the Corolla engine just like a glove. People, we're going to be doing front wheel drive skids. This is going to work. The moment of truth. I'm so excited I can't even talk. <laughs> Never been so excited about a Yaris before. I'm so nervous I can't talk. Uh oh. Is it too big? Is yeah, it too big? Do you know what? Can we put this end in first? Can we kind of go? I, we can try. What are we hitting over there? The car. It's a pretty tight fit, man. If it does fit, it's a tight fit. Yep, yep. And then we're going to go in further closer to the car. Do you car. need to go down still? No, I think we just need to get it in now. It's just, we're, we're binding up on our drive shafts and stuff. They're just a bit late. So, I mean, can you see where this mount is? Like, it just needs to go up and onto it. It couldn't have gone better if I tried. Oh, what a feeling. Oh, what a feeling, my back. Yeah. Dude, that's a mount in at least. Oh, my God. It's taking a lot longer than expected to get the second mount in, so we're adding some long, slow crossfades to the edit to give you the feeling of time going past with some dreamy music that we made. Now we're going to get it sorted and you just sit back and relax. So the good news is uh, we've got two mounts in. I'm currently humping this engine into place while Marty uh, gets the lower gearbox mount on. Uh, we've also got, as you can see here, this, um, this gearbox mount. Now these two obviously both should fit because they're from the Yaris. That was in the car that is this car. Um, but that sound you can hear now is the sound of success, I believe, Martin. Hopefully. This is the lower gearbox mount bolting in. So we've got two mounts in, which means we know the engine's basically in the correct position. I'm going to leave it all a bit loose while we work out what we're doing with the driver's side. But we'll just keep the driver's side on the crane 
so that it's not just hanging off these mounts and we should be good. From what we can see so far, it looks like the Corolla engine with the Yaris gearbox is now successfully in the Yaris engine bay with two engine mounts attached, which means I think I owe Marty a WRX. Instagram finished, man. This is SEMA ready. What? When, you, when your engine's mounted but nothing works and you take it to a car show and go, look at me, my stuff works. All oh, right, auto salon. Remember the car that won auto salon had no one had even started it? Back Never in driven the day? it, not dynoed, not nothing. Hadn't even turned the key. Anyway, two of the engine mounts that are on the gearbox. <laughs> so not engine mounts at all. <laughs> two of the gearbox mounts are attached. This one over here, as you can see, um, this mount doesn't fit. Doesn't fit, and here's why. So that mount goes on that bit of the car there, and it just, it's too big. So what we might do is just fab up a bracket to fit it so it stays in there and stays in the right spot. And in the meantime, we'll leave it on the crane because it is secure, it's not gonna fall out and we might start connecting up everything else. So that shifter, clutch, start plugging stuff in and see if we can get it to run. Clutch is on. Yep. That feels like a clutch. Looks like a clutch down here. Hopefully. The missing piece of this puzzle is our third engine mount, so we decided to call Toyota. Yeah, it's not available, uh, it's not on file in Australia, it's never been sold in Australia. Oh, okay, all right, that makes sense. I might, maybe I'm better off just get grabbing one from overseas. While we ponder our engine mount situation, we continue swapping over parts and reconnecting everything from the Corolla engine to the Yaris. And this is where I almost accidentally cut our fuel lines. Next up, I'm taking out the Yaris ECU and I'll swap the brackets onto the Corolla ECU ECU for a neat and tidy install. So I've swapped the brackets over and the Corolla ECU is now bolted into the Yaris. Amazing. The ECU is plugged back into the loom and then the heater lines are put back on and we are close to being finished. All the important stuff of running the engine is in there. So and now we've pretty much plugged it. I mean, there's obviously no radiator yet. We're not worrying about air conditioning. No. Because Yaris. So the so if we plug, if we work this so just this side of it out and plug that in and there's no immobiliser, it should start. Yeah. That's amazing. I know. So this will just, we'll just have to go through and do the nerdy thing and work out what that does. But look, there's nothing else, man. That's it. Cool. Just those wires. All right. Well, let's try and make it do, Martin. There's rumours that with the right combination of looms and mounts, this is a bolt-in, plug-in swap. But it looks like the cars Toyota sent Australia are slightly different, so we'll have to trace the wires out to work out what goes where. Injectors, cam control coils and position sensors are easy, but the starter, alternator and related circuits need to be stripped back and with the help of some wiring diagrams, joined together. For the engine mount, we're welding a metal plate in place of the rubber mount that we can't get our hands on. It'll be harsh, but it will hold the motor in just fine. Well done, Martin. High sixth. Um, we had to make an engine mount because there's an engine mount you can get from America for the Toyota XD or Japan. I think it's called like a Toyota ITS that works with this combo, but we're not going to be able to get one. So, no, we're not going to be able to get one. Now, the other thing that we were working on is the wiring, and the wiring was a bit of a big job, so we called in our mate Miles, who is a wiring wizard. Uh, and basically what we had to do, luckily Toyota are pretty uncreative with their wiring colours. Uh, again, just like you can get the engine mounts overseas, you can also get this loom, it's mostly this front loom here, uh, that fits and bolts straight in, clips straight in, Ours doesn't because the plugs are different, so what we had to do is just strip back some of the wires, double check where they went. It's boring stuff like alternator and starter, but yep. you need it to make it work. The ECU and the body loom plug directly in, which is just awesome, but there is key security in the way. That's right, so the problem was is that the Corolla actually has a module that is buried all the way down here, like way down underneath the dash, and that won't tell the ECU to let the engine start unless a little chip in the key is uh, sitting at the key barrel when you start the car. So we've actually found a bit of a hack around that. We pulled the module out of the Corolla. We've installed it in the Yaris. This here is the little chip that you can see just there. So what we've got to do is we've got to hold that against the little antenna in the key barrel. And when that's being held like that, then the little transponder sends down to the module and goes, hey, I've got the right key. And if we hold that there, and then we 
put the Yaris key in, the car should be hopefully suitably Come tricked on. into starting. Come on. Come on. <laughs> try again. That's all right. We're going to get there. I'll, I'll try holding it in a different place. Here we go. Yeah. yeah! Sounds good. There's no check engine light. <laughs> That's so good. Now, you can also get... That's amazing. You can get wiring looms that don't, and ECUs that don't have the security. That's the other thing that can potentially make this easier. So you can get a mount, not in Australia. a front loom, and the, the loom for the inside. That means you don't have to do any of that. So yep. do that. If you're doing it at home, get your parts from Japan or America, and you should be able to just full Lego it, right? Absolutely, it's full Lego. But it fits, it's in there, it starts, and there's no check engine light. So, man, let's piece it back together and go for a drive. Radiator on the front. Yep. Lights in, panels back on, hit the street. Corolla power. Hell yeah. Let's do this. We are almost there, people. We just need to get a radiator, fill up the fluids, and then we're ready to hit the street. All right, we've just noticed that we've got a massive leak underneath the car, which is possibly uh, the drive shaft maybe is not seated properly, or maybe there's an issue with the seal. So we've actually got to pull that out and have a look, uh, and then we'll get on to finishing the rest of the front of the car. It turns out when we put the engine in, the driver's side shaft wasn't seated properly. That two millimetre gap was enough for Yaris Hilton to drop its guts all over the ground. With the lower control arm out, we can swing the hub around and get it into place. We can then give it a gutful of GL4 gear oil. With that done, now it's time for a new radiator. Yes. With the big smash at the front of the car, we decided a new radiator might be a good idea. The existing fan clips straight onto the new radiator, but we'll need to invent some new radiator hoses to suit the Corolla engine. With the lower radiator support panel in place, we can sit the radiator in and work out our hose routing. I'm using a small piece of pipe to graft together different hoses to suit. Meanwhile, I'm putting the front of the car back together. I have to mix and match our bottom radiator hose because on the Corolla it comes out in a different spot to the Yaris. So I've got a Holden Gemini radiator hose which has the right size inlet there. Then it reduces down to a smaller size. So that's Corolla size, that's Yaris size. I'm using half the old Yaris hose, the Gemini hose. Put a little bit of metal in between with some clamps. It'll be sweet. It feels horrible putting this pummeled front end back onto Yaris Hilton, but uh, it's all we have and it's all we have time for, so it's going on. Look at it. It just feels so dirty. So everything has been going awesome and Marty's Bowerbird collectiveness has been amazing. He just collects everything and never gets rid of anything, which Gemini. is amazing. Gemini radiator hoses, man. Gemini radiator hoses. There's only one thing we stuffed up on and that is that the radiator doesn't actually have a radiator cap. It's got this weird coolant filler neck, which is this bit of plastic and the hose goes from the radiator to the engine through this thing that then has a radiator cap on it. And that bit we think we accidentally sent off with the Yaris garbage engine off to be recycled. Whoops, I think it's still on the engine. Because so, we're going to use all the Corolla stuff because it made sense to use the Corolla stuff on the Corolla engine, but that part of it we needed Yaris. Yeah, Whoops. so um, Whoops. I've been trying to ring a few uh, records, but it is near the end of the day, so I'm going to jump in the car and go and try and find something. Meanwhile, Marty's going to try and make something. That is the only thing now between this car and us going for a drive. I'm going to put the bumper on and the bonnet. Not going for a drive. So you put that together. Yep. I'll go down with the wreckers. I'll see you shortly. Good luck, Martin. Thanks, man. I'm more luck for you because if you get it, we're fine. The front of the car is quick and easy to reassemble, requiring only some gentle massaging of the clips. The bumper goes on first, then four bolts for the bonnet, and it looks like a car again. After Marty's given the front a good pounding with his hands and feet, I've had some good news at the wreckers. I have found exactly what it is that we're looking for. Here is the piece down here, see this? This is the bit that we got rid of. So instead of there being a radiator cap on the radiator, it's got this weird little forward height thing. The front of the car is back together, the bonnet's on, the bumper's on. 
Um, I've pulled the number plate off just to see what's going on down here. And now it's a question of, do we keep this to keep it looking legit or do we get rid of it? Ah! Oh, oh, do that. I'm fine. I got these, Martin. Matt. They said, how much would you pay for that? Yeah. I said $10. They were like, okay. Then I didn't have my wallet. So I said, I got to pay with a credit card. And they go, oh, now it's $15 then. Five bucks more. 50% more. Wow. 50% more, Martin. Martin, I'm just going to stay down here. I drop the oil. You do the top. Yep. I do the bottom. Do it. And we'll finger dangle it together. Buyer beware when buying engines. Our sump bolt was not only stripped on the heads and not working properly, the thread itself was stripped which means it wasn't sealed properly, which means it didn't come out properly, which means it won't go back in properly, which means we can't keep oil in the engine. It was really hard to actually get it out. Like normally you just crack it and then do it by hand, which I couldn't do. And when I um, did finally get it out, when I put it back in, when it actually seated, it just spun forever and ever. So we're gonna try and just clean up the thread, which will hopefully be enough. But failing that, it's new sump plug or make something or new super car. blue. <laughs> new car. <laughs> yeah. With the sump finally sorted, it's time to fill her up with oil and coolant in preparation for the maiden voyage. Alright, coolant's in, oil's in. We just had a bit of a leak at the back where the heater hoses are, probably because, you know, they were a little bit uh, crushed where those inlets are. But um, we're going to start it up. We're going to do that little sneaky key trick, get it going and see if anything spurts out that is not meant to. And just idle it for a bit and... Oh, the wipers work. Good That's job. good. All right, here we go. She bubbling straight away. Good. Well, our check engine light is off, so that is mission accomplished. A total success. But now, it's time to see how it drives and if it's actually fast. All right, Yaris Hilton, bring it. Bring it. is crazy man that's like toyota's v-tech isn't it yeah that cam control makes such a big difference wow she's loud too man the thing is everybody talks about the butt dyno of how much faster a car is but we don't actually know how much faster it is do we well that's true well luckily we have a good control which is the fact this has already been to the track so we'll just take it back again oh and we did a we did a, oh yeah i'm ready i'm ready That's really crazy. Does. There's not a whole lot down low, but then it winds out and just goes ballistic. It winds out like heaps more than it used to. This particular Toyota Yaris was never meant for racetracks or glory. It was designed as a reliable shopping trolley, and that's pretty much exactly how we've kept it. It's certainly no show car with dented panels, rooted paint, and generally shagged exterior. But we've got it sitting on some workmeisters wrapped in RE003s. And under the bonnet, the Toyota heart still beats strong with our 1.8 litre naturally aspirated Corolla engine, which you can pick up for around 500 bucks. Held in, of course, with a homemade engine mount and cable ties. The exhaust is a two inch piece of pipe mated to the front section from the Corolla. Now our best time here at this track is 1.07 and it's time to see just how hard Yaris Hilton can go. Yaris Hilton, we've put a lot of time and not much care or money into you. <laughs> so um, come through with the goods. Give us at least three seconds faster, please. Are you ready for this? I'm ready, come on Yaris Hilton, let's do it. just like Chaz Mostert taught me. Round the corner, tyres gripping on for dear life. Braking late, aggressive around this corner. Squeeze the power on, try and straighten up the track. Into third, around the top here. Tyres gripping on for dear life. We've hit 120 up there, I've never gone that fast before. Braking late, I'm all over these ripple strips. 
Braking late. Tire spin, come on. Grip, 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 come on. Come on, Yaris Hilton. I'm smashing the rev limiter. Come on! Come on! Oh, that is a handful to drive, tell you what but about a thousand times funner than it used to be. So I have no idea what time we just got. But anything faster than a 107 is a win in my book. Oh man, I cannot drive any faster. 102. That's impressive, dude. Yeah, no, we've dropped five to six seconds off our time. Good driving, man. So there it is, we've done it. A total drop of 10 seconds off our lap time compared to the stock car, and that is worthy of a celebration. Don't speak, got the angle set up This love, working hard to make you mine. One night, so much love, I'm in my prime. Pretend, never means I'm out of time. So there it is, people. We put a Corolla engine in a Yaris in a couple of days, and guess what? It's faster. It's a lot faster. Now, when we first came here with a totally bog stock Yaris, we got about a minute 12 around this track. We put some better wheels and tyres on and dropped that by about five seconds. We then changed the engine and the clutch and a few other bits and pieces, and we dropped almost another five seconds off that again. So we've gone from a minute 12 to a minute two, which is a huge change for a car that is really that's this slow, just using parts that are just shopping trolley parts. We're not talking about high performance, expensive, anything with you know JDM tax on it. It's just basic bits. But the reality is that numbers only tell you half the story. And while some people can be chasing drag numbers and dyno numbers, it makes sense for kind of some science and some reference. But what it doesn't tell you anything about is your experience of actually doing it. What have you learned? Who did you do it with? How are you different today than you were yesterday? Working on cars is this kind of ongoing journey, hopefully of education and hopefully learning about cars, but also learning about yourself. Like, what do you do when stuff goes wrong? Like, have you got mates that you can call that can fix it for you? I mean, that to me is really what the exciting thing is about being, you know, into cars. It's about that journey you have. It's about the people you meet. The reality is I've never swapped a Corolla engine into a Yaris. Yeah. I learned heaps of stuff. I had an awesome time, Martin. It's, it's thank you. The, it's the achievement too, and it doesn't have to be a supercar. It doesn't have to be a super expensive, crazy thing. It can be something as basic as a Yaris, and the joy you can get from it is as good, and I would argue sometimes better, because you did it on the cheap by yourself. I agree, Martin, because not everyone has a GTR or a Supra or a WRX. I mean, this is the kind of car that people have. Yep. So, Martin, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with oh, everybody. Good, man. Thank you for all your hard work. It's Sick. been an epic, epic season it of has. Mighty Car Mods. I'm very, very excited about 2020. Absolutely. Um, and um, we look, we leave, didn't get our... Just we'll leave, leave that, that there. Leave that. Let's just leave that We there. didn't get our sub-minute lap, but of course that's not, not getting in the way of... Uh, it's not getting in between you and your mm -hmm. WRX, and the colour of that WRX you found is just excellent. I love two-door JDM cars. Man. So good. Yeah, so good. And when them. they're that colour, and they're yeah. just like so clean, yeah. it's hard to find cars. It's Yaris Hilton.